What do two powerful men in tech have in common, especially when you look at CZ and also Elon, is the future of crypto Twitter and what that might mean. We're going to break all that down for you. How Binance might be playing into a very interesting role here. It's going to get interesting. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get into it today. And I want to start off with this one uh, around a topic that everybody's asking, and that is with this you know, this evolution of the future of where Twitter could be going, who are going to be the players, especially for the crypto side of it? Because we know blockchain is getting ready to make its way into crypto in a big way. Now that Elon has the uh, keys, the question is, is who are going to be the partners? Who are going to be the players? Let's jump to this uh, clip right here. I want to play this because this is an interesting uh, interview between in Spock Box and CZ. It. Well, the deal was put together a few months back. Um, Elon was buying, not buying it, and we haven't changed our position. Um, the reasons, there are many reasons for supporting the deal. Uh, Twitter is a speech, uh, free speech platform, which is global, which is extremely important. Um, we want to support, uh, support strong entrepreneurs. Elon Musk is a very strong entrepreneur. Twitter is a tool that I use personally very heavily. So, um, and we want to make sure that crypto has a seat at the table for when it comes to free speech. So, and there are more tactical things like we want to help bring Twitter into Web3 uh, when they're ready. And um, um, yeah, we want, to solve, we want to help solve those immediate problems. Like, you know, as you just mentioned earlier, um, charging for memberships, et cetera, that can be done very easily globally using cryptocurrencies as a means, as a means of payment. Possibly. Elon has, has hinted that this could turn into a sort of super app. Do um, you think that's possible? And what, what would that look like in your mind? Um, I think that's very possible. Um, so everybody have a different meaning of super app in their, in their head. Um, I'm not sure if my version is going to be the same as Elon's, um, but he was referring to WeChat very heavily, right. and I use WeChat quite a lot. So, you know, payments, uh, social media, messaging, um, ordering food, everything. Yeah. How concerned are you as an investor in this, in this business about the outside interests and potential pressures that could come on Elon? Uh, as a result of not just owning Twitter, but obviously he has Tesla, which has business in lots of different countries, SpaceX, which has business uh, in the United States, but in particular has lots of business with the Defense Department and, and the various pressures that could come to bear. I think, well, uh, every business, every person have to deal with pressure. They always have uh, other uh, potential friends or uh, uh, interested parties that can exert pressure. But if anyone can take pressure, I think Elon Musk has shown that he can, he can handle pressure. So as an entrepreneur, we understand that uh, very well. So we fully support him in whatever he do. All right, so you can you can kind of see CZ is all in. I think there's a great opportunity here, not only for Binance, but also the element of uh, what Binance brings to the table in terms of partnerships, because there are a lot of aspects to what's happening within Web3 and also crypto, where I would say Binance is one of the leading entities out there that's helping to develop that. If you look at what Binance Labs is doing, the potential for payments down the road, he mentioned that in the interview. Uh, I think there's a big, big uh, component here that definitely plays in. Here's a tweet from Rand Nooner from Crypto uh, Banter. I suspect Twitter will launch blockchain payments. I agree with him. Uh, would imagine the options will be Bitcoin, Doge, BUSD, obviously because of the tie-in with CZ there. There are some other aspects to this, and you'll, you'll hear this in another video that I've done uh, that'll be coming up after this live later today. It's a breakdown on Solana and why there might be a tie-in uh, with where Solana is going. Take a look at that one. Um, also, Binance uh, CEO says charging Twitter users can be uh, done very easily using global, um, globally using uh, cryptocurrencies. This will be the question mark right now, I think, whether or not Elon and Twitter implement a true payment system within Twitter that would be fully, whether it was uh, fiat and or an optional uh, access to other crypto uh, products. If that is the case, I think we would see a pretty significant move in terms, not necessarily on adoption because tw Twitter in general is still a very small percentage, but I think there's an opportunity here where Twitter st could start to gain a lot of users just based on some of the utility aspects of what this app could be, much to what uh, CZ was talking about uh, in terms of what a super app might look like when you compare it to something like a WeChat, uh, et cetera. The other aspect I wanted to f uh, focus on right here is uh, the Web3 Watch. This is a story by Blockworks real quick, uh, tw Twitter's potential crypto wallet and royalty 
uh, optional looks, looks rare could play into this as well. And there was a couple of things uh, that really kind of uh, started to pique my attention. Obviously, we know Twitter's there. Uh, working on a wallet prototype that supports crypto deposit and withdrawal, which I think will be a big factor right there if we do get one that is fully functional, especially in something as easy as to use uh, to use as Twitter. Um, and this is coming from Jane Wong. Uh, she's known for testing out tech products, new features on social media platforms, including uh, Twitter, uh, especially around the whole aspect around the Twitter blue side of things, which is perfect for what could happen there. So uh, very cool in the sense that the wallet could be integrated into this. And I think this is one of those things, again, that points to a future of Web3 and a, and a true uh, decentralized social media. That will be the big question. I've got a video at the end also that breaks this down uh, that was very interesting on an interview between Lex and uh, Balaji. Uh, and it's a very interesting take on it, but and uh, hang around for that one because it's a it's a I think a really good explanation of where all of the dots might connect here. Further into uh, let's see here, we had a couple couple other stories for further into this one right here. I wanted to showcase a couple other things in here if it's highlighted. There we go. Uh, also remember uh, here is the tie-in uh, Solana Labs. Obviously, they launched their own Android-powered smartphone. That being Saga. In June, this was obviously integrated with the Solana blockchain. Now, when you have Twitter and the potential, especially in mobile, there really is only one Web3 mobile player right now, and that would be Solana. Now, could someone come and you know compete quickly? Could someone like an Android or even... It's definitely not going to be uh, uh, Apple and iPhone. So the potential there, I think, is going to be interesting as it ties into what the potential might roll out into for Web3 and how Twitter plays a big role of this. I, ironically, this could be uh, Twitter's claim to fame of really breaking into Web3 as the first true decentralized social media platform, or at least in its trek to go in that direction. Make sure and hit the like button if you guys like these kind of breakdowns. Uh, I will give you guys some uh, sentiment data also on BNB. We'll show you guys some cool stuff there, and also on Doge, because Doge and BNB both uh, we're on the move this weekend and over you know, the end of last week, if you saw our video last week, we talked a little bit about this of watching BNB and Doge because we felt like those were definitely going to continue to, to uh, climb the charts there. Uh, I want to get into this right here. Elon Musk considers charging Twitter's, uh, Twitter users 20 bucks a month for verified accounts. I don't know about this one. This one is a little bit on the out ends. I think he's going in and he's trying to figure out where are some revenue opportunities here because our advertising revenue sucks and we're in a bad position. So he basically has put together Twitter Blue's subscription service. Right now it's five bucks a month, uh, maybe going up to 19 bucks a month. Uh, the whole verification process is also being revamped right now. I think that's a good thing in the sense that it will allow more people that are real people. Listen, I have a problem with it, and you know I've been trying to be verified on Twitter, and I'm, I don't know, I'm a 10-year user. Um, of Twitter, but I have a lot of scammers out there on Twitter. Remember, guys, it's only at Paul Barron, never any other thing, and I won't, you know, be connecting with you unless you and I are already communicating. So, um, but the scams that are out there within Twitter, the bots, this is another thing. We've already started to see a little bit of a movement in bot traffic in a downtrend. So, I don't, I don't know if there actually is a switch that turns these things on or what, but I almost feel like that is the case. We'll know more as we collect more data uh, for the CPI this week. Uh, but he also flagged a Twitter poll launched on Monday morning asking Twitter how much uh, they would pay for a blue tick. And it was just basic you know, stuff. Now this came from uh, Jason Calacanis. And if you guys don't know, Jason is the uh, co-host, one of the co-hosts over at All In Podcast. Uh, and you know, he's had a big love and hate affair with Twitter and Google. Um, especially Google because they delisted one of his websites from search many, many years ago, pretty much put it into his business. So he's had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder around all of that uh, for quite some time. You can listen to his podcast. He's pretty open about those kind of things. But he's actually uh, a lot more involved in what's happening over at Twitter, uh, which would be interesting if he uh, became the new CEO uh, for sure. So lots happening uh, in this space. The poll Twitter uh, users now on bringing back TikTok. This was another factor that plays into this. And again, this gets back into the innovation, maybe from Binance and the partnerships that they know 
of where this might roll out into some sort of monetary solution because this is a big scenario for that plays into a lot of the uh, influencers in the space of all different likes. That's why TikTok and obviously uh, Instagram do so well. But Twitter, you know, remember, they're the OG. They were the first really to the short video game and they axed Vine early because it was an early product and the market wasn't ready for it. And of course, now we know what you know, happened there. But if you look at the, the list right here, I want to go to the, tw- the poll itself. And right now, as of eight hours left on this poll, almost 4 million votes. And you can see the number here hovering at around se- almost 70% of bringing back Vine. I voted yes, of course. And I think that would be a great tool. And I think it's just one that might actually integrate into a larger uh, short messaging solution like Twitter and be able to subs- subsequently displace what's happening on Vine or on uh, TikTok. So there's a, a good opportunity here, I think, that Elon is already, and I mean, literally, just walked into the headquarters on Friday. We've already started to see a lot of moves in this space. So much news coming out of Twitter, but even more importantly, is the strategies that are starting to play into this. I think this is going to be an interesting fall as we go further. 62% of Doge holders now in profit amid hopes of Twitter integration. Again, if Doge pulls on to Twitter integration and it becomes something uh, spendable, you know, meme coin, uh, there could be some very interesting, that would be one of the first real utility aspects of Doge. And you guys know, we've talked about Doge here on the show. And the thing that I've often said is I'm not a buyer of Doge. I've, I've owned it in the past, but mostly, mostly as just, you know, playing around with meme coins. But if it gets into Twitter's hands and it is utilized as a tool set or a utility, that brings a completely different viewpoint on where Doge is going to go, uh, which is really kind of what you're seeing right now. So the links obviously between uh, Musk's Twitter purchase and Doge's mass purchase uh, surge uh, no surprise. I think everybody was looking in this. And I think if you were looking at tokens last week or the week before, and we knew that Elon's uh, role was going to play into it, Doge would have been one. I think most people uh, kind of understood that. The one that was kind of a sleeper was BNB because of Binance's connection. Uh, I think that one is also getting some, well, we know it's getting a lot of push on social right now uh, because of what's happening there. Uh, and I think there's going to be a handful of others. So I'm still uh, curious as to how Solana may play into this. And also Polygon may come knocking at the door with integrations and partnerships for Web3. Uh, here's another thing. Now that Twitter is in the hands of Elon Musk, I can see a real possibility that Doge will somehow merge with the platform. This would be a big one. And that comes from uh, Hosk over at Cardano, which is um, intriguing concept because there is an opportunity there. And again, could be a play into all of this uh, still going. Uh, here you've got Google still promoting crypto phishing sites. Uh, this is coming over from Binance. And the reason I bring this story up is because of the fact that we are seeing what I feel might be a transition in Silicon Valley. And what I mean is, is a transition of power. And I know a lot of people look at Twitter as really kind of the redheaded stepchild of technology. If you think Facebook and what's happening at Instagram, then you take ByteDance and what's happening at TikTok, which is really already being challenged. Then you look at Google, YouTube, and the likes. There really hasn't been huge innovation in all of these areas to really kind of stop all of the problems we've got around bots, phishing, and all of the fraudulent activities that are happening right now, not only in social, but also in search. So it's going to be an interesting play into how this connects. And we'll get into some questions again. Don't forget to hit the like button. It does help us out uh, in one, getting the news out there, but also helping others start to learn about what's going on in Web3, but more importantly in blockchain. So if you're a Doge lover, a BNB lover, smash that like button. It really does help out. And make sure to subscribe. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure and click subscribe. Uh, you'll get notifications of things like what we do here on the live. We'll jump over to some uh, sentiment here in a moment. I want to play a clip here that came over from the Lex Friedman podcast. And this is uh, uh, Balaji Asiravansan. I always have a problem pronouncing his last name, but he made some interesting statements here. Let me play this. Uh, but there's several different versions, right? Search. Once, uh, you know, once you realize um, block explorers are an important stealth threat to search, 
They're very high traffic sites like blockchain.com and either scan that Google has just totally slept on. They don't have a block explorer. You don't have to do anything in terms of trading or anything like that. Google does not have a block explorer. Why? They don't think of it as search, but it is search. It's absolutely search. It's a, it's a very important kind of search engine. And once you have crypto social, you have you now show that you're not just indexing in a block explorer like uh, on-chain transactions, but on-chain communications. Okay. So now you suddenly see, oh, the entire social web that Google couldn't index, it could only index the worldwide web and not the social web. Now it's actually the on-chain signed web, right? because every post is digitally signed. It's a new set of signals. It's way easier to index than either the World Wide Web or the social web because it's open and public. So this is a total disruptive thing to search in the medium term because it's a new kind of data set to index, right? All right, I'm going to pause it right there for a second. So what he just said is we, just what I kind of was explaining earlier is we are looking at a potential transition on how we know the internet exists today. As we know the internet existing today, it's Google search, it's the World Wide Web, uh, indexing all of mankind's knowledge. The potential for blockchain to replace that and become a much more secure signature signed, authenticity, all those elements that have been missing in Web 2, Web 1, is literally at our feet right now. And there's gonna be a handful of tool sets that will make this occur. And whether that is a Twitter, which it's interesting that Elon could be in control of a super app with the amount of innovation and development that he could play into it. And it really opens up an opportunity here to essentially displace all that we know and what we know around the internet of today. So the next 10 years, I just want you guys to get ready. We are, you're gonna get a chance to see this again. You're gonna get a chance, if you're young, uh, and you just know, you know, the World Wide Web as, you know, from really Web 1.8 to Web 2.0, like what we have seen since the uh, really around 2006. You're going to get a chance to get a front row seat, I think, on the innovation of where Web 3 is going, whether it's Web 2.5, Web 3, however you want to call it, the next evolution of where blockchain is going to play into this. And this is going to be a very intriguing aspect around what partners are going to play into this and what companies. I will put Twitter right now, just because of the moves that Elon has made so far and his intent with free speech, at the top of the heap right now, maybe over Google. So get ready, people. I think we are in for some very interesting times. I wanna jump over to uh, the sentiment data. So remember, our CPI tool harvests off of social. Twitter is one, crypto Twitter is probably one of the core elements. And here you've got Dogecoin uh, clipping up last week on 1024. It was still hovering down there, and then boom, obviously we knew it was coming. Uh, but it had, and these are scores over the weekend as well, um, that really started to pull Dogecoin above. And you know, right now it's still on fly. I, it does look like it's, it's leveling off a little bit. We'll get the new data in this afternoon uh, for the 31st. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, plays out. The other one that plays into this is um, Binance. Binance also playing into this, uh, also clipping up because it had been really kind of very steady uh, in the essence of we haven't seen a lot of movement on Binance. And then all of a sudden, let me just zoom in on that. This little move right here is exactly what we're talking about uh, where Binance started to see a little bit of uh, uh, an indention here in terms of a positive indention of the market going forward. So we're wa watching Solana, we're watching Binance. And we're watching Doge right now. Solana, obviously, for reasons with um, what's happening over there at Breakpoint, which is their big event in Lisbon. So be on the lookout for all those. I'm still uh, questioning whether or not, you know, definitely not something that you want to FOMO. This is not financial advice saying you should look at these tokens to purchase them. What I hope this does is give you guys some, you know, some research tools that you can kind of start to go learn about this. Maybe this is the first time you've heard of any of these. Uh, and Twitter's news is creating the, the connection here. I do want to get into the poll today. What do we have on the poll over there? Let's take a look. Who benefits the most from massive Twitter Web3 push? Uh, Binance BNB, 45%. Wow. Doge at 44. Wow, this is a really, uh, and then FTX. <laughs> the guys are just cruel on these polls, <laughs> putting FTX in there. Did anybody see the, the Sam Bankman, um, Eric Voorhees uh, moderated podcast by the Bankless guys? If you have not seen that and you're into crypto, go watch that video. I'll just tell the guys at Bankless I said hello. 
because uh, it it did some things, I think, in terms of revealing Sam Bankman Freed uh, in a way that I, I didn't know existed. So it's intriguing. It's worth the watch. It's a little boring, but you'll soon get the point of what Voorhees is trying to get to around DeFi and really kind of the future of regulating crypto and what that might look like. We've got a lot of stuff coming our XRP too. And don't forget, we have a live stream with Gareth today coming up in about half an hour. So we'll be on the hour with that. Make sure and check out. Let's take a couple of questions. Uh, all right. Um, let's see here. I came in late, but I want to invest in Doge. Uh, here we go. Came in late, but I, would, I wouldn't invest in Doge. Let me go to the queue. Here we go. Ada. There, here we go. Ada is trying to network uh, side chains. Charles is trying to put together feeders on, on Doge, XRP, since they don't have any smart contracts. Yeah, that's a possibility. And, you know, I, I felt like, you know, it was interesting because he seems to always be at the forefront of these kinds of movements. But and I say forefront, it, it's usually after the fact uh, when we start to see the reality of what something is, is uh, in terms of setting in, which is what's happening over on Twitter. Crypto Stevo coming in. Yes, Eric made SPF look like a fool. Yeah, you're right, man. It was terrible. Uh, it was really bad. Uh, and this is the guy that essentially is possibly running the lobbyist group that is informing our lawmakers. That concerns me, you know. So traveling with Mo, uh, how about Shiba? I don't know, you know, Shiba I think has some potential here, but I think right now Doge is the, uh, is the coveted dog that's going to make its way into uh, Twitter. And whether or not it's going to, you know, find, kind of uh, find some sort of functionality and utility, that will be the big question. Be on the lookout for this. This is a very interesting animal right now. No pun intended. Uh, Inger coming in. Uh, crypto transactions on Twitter will offer the Gov a sure way to monitor and collect tax. I'm sure they welcome the massive participation that will occur. You know, this is the thing. I get this all the time, guys. Why would you... I, I don't understand. Is this... I. Uh, when you pay for something, every credit card transaction you do today, don't you think that's probably monitored? Every bank transaction? Monetary systems already built in. Blockchain only extends the monetary system. Now, if you're doing things illegally and things of that nature, you're using the, long, the, wrong, <laughs> the wrong currency. You should be using fiat. That's the best uh, for those kind of things. So uh, I don't see it as a, a bad thing. I do think that we need anonymity from a DeFi standpoint and the ability to go in on and do things of that nature. But it really is upon you know, the individual to keep it safe and, and uh, uh, really kind of honest, I should say. Uh, let's look here. Would, would Doge, just coming from Delta 9, would Doge be something you would consider a quick flip on? Listen, right now, I would consider uh, a lot of these kinds of moves happening right now because we're, we're in such a tumultuous time. There are opportunities out there, so I'm not putting anything off the chart. I'm looking at Doge right now, but it's, it's a little bit dangerous because of the FOMO. But the connection to Twitter just intrigues me to no end of where this might be going. So, very cool. Uh, Crystal's coming in and saying, Spider Tanks launches in just an hour. Yeah, that's right, uh, 1031. That's Gala Games' new, uh, new game. Make sure and check out some of that. We have a Gala playlist, by the way, which are a couple of Spider Tanks. Uh, love to kind of get your feedback, too. Drop some comments if you are playing Spider Tanks, if you are you know, like really starting to get into blockchain gaming. Love to kind of get your feedback. Uh, all right, so Tom, Tom, uh, Tim at Apple said the metaverse is not a future. So what is? I'd say blockchain on crypto, yeah. Uh, could Apple surprise and go full on crypto? They have devices and the wallet. That would be a really interesting play by Apple. It, I think that would surprise everybody because uh, they have been so standoffish now. Sometimes you have to look left and they go right. Uh, I just don't know, at least based on what I see so far. I mean, if it was Steve Jobs there, yeah, I would say that would be a, a definite look here and he goes here kind of scenario. But I don't think Apple is there just yet. And again, they may be pushing so hard on crypto in-app purchases and wallets and all that kind of stuff because they have something in play. That's the only reason I see this kind of this lockdown. This other thing about them trying to discredit the term metaverse, listen, this is just a thing because of meta and Apple. That's all it is. These two companies are essentially going to become each other's nemesis for quite some time. And they're both, you know, because they have the, both of them have the largest user base when you think about Facebook and you think about Apple in terms of the Apple iPhone and the Apple ecosystem. 
Those two go head to head. It's a completely different scenario when you compare that to Google, which is uh, you know, considerably lower on the totem pole there. All right, so uh, I voted Dogecoin, uh, but it will be XRP. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but it will be XRP holders. Uh, are you, I'm not sure if you mean XRP is possibly coming in to uh, Twitter. I, I don't know if that would be the case. Uh, retail investors will most likely adopt Doge, not BNB. Well, Doge, yes, uh, just because of, you know, kind of this whole functionality that uh, has been a meme coin and has been integrated. But I think the scenario with BNB is not necessarily, think Rails, okay, in the essence of where Web3 will grow. BNB may be the gateway into Twitter innovation in Web3 and blockchain, whether it's through partnerships, alignment, wallets, all those kind of things which are already in place. It's really just kind of a transition. The interesting thing to me is that Sam Bankman did not make this move. Is SBF did not uh, make this early on move and we've seen uh, this alignment. Now I think that there are political positions in place. Sam Bankman has clearly kind of uh, gone the direction from a de democratic side. And I think Elon actually sets on whether you're a libertarian or a conservative. I feel like he's probably laying in uh, to that kind of political front. And in many cases, those kind of things weigh out on decisions in this level, especially around decisions of partnership. So lots happening. Don't forget, guys, we do have a live stream at three o'clock today with, uh, with Gareth. We're going to be breaking down the FOMC meeting. Uh, we're also going to be talking about whether or not the Fed will pivot. Is there some signs that we could be seeing a little bit of a dovish move coming up, or will this continue to be pressure on the neck of the American economy. We'll find out all that at three o'clock. If you guys want to reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.